Hey everybody, it's Frank again, coming at you with a new video today. We're going to be discussing the crown jewel of my boombox collection. That is the, none other than the JVC RC 550 JW radio cassette recorder. This particular unit was manufactured back in 1979 and its original owner really maintained this unit very well. Kept it in its original packaging most of its life when it wasn't in use and he really kept everything that came with it aside from the original batteries. Um, we're talking about the box, packaging materials, original literature, demo cassette tapes that haven't even been added to packaging yet, Q-tip swabs to clean the cassette heads, you name it. This thing is a museum quality piece and I'm very excited to share it with you. I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy the video. Uh, we're gonna do an unboxing. We're gonna go through some of the features and functions of this unit and just give you an overall view of this fantastic piece of electronic history. So I hope you'll stick around and coming at you now with the unboxing. So stick around. All right, well, here she is. This is the uh, original box here. As you can tell, the uh, warranty cards and paperwork are still with the unit. And um, this here is the uh, original limited warranty card with the serial number on it. Um, the serial number does match the unit and also matches the serial number that's on the box indicating that all of this equipment is in its original packing and also comes with a card which indicates where you can get this unit serviced um, along with a toll free number and as you can see JBC and all the different locations that you can service your unit for warranty indicates to keep it in its original box which the original owner has done So on the side of the box, you've got your branding, you've got the model of the unit. You've also got the quality control pass sticker, where it was shipped to, where it was made, manufactured by Victor Company of Japan. And that is the serial number as well on the box. And also where it was shipped to originally. It was uh, IA Stereo Warehouse, uh, East Dundee Road in Illinois and this was sold to a professor um, back then and it still has its original UPS shipping label indicating that it shipped in August 30th 1983 so that's when this unit made its way to the new owner and let's take a look inside of this box You'll see that inside we have the original literature that came with the unit and we also have original q-tip swabs that was used to clean the cassette tape heads we also have a safety guide on consumer audio products basically stating um, how to care for the unit I'm telling you make sure you don't go in the shower with it and electrocute yourself. Also external antenna installation instructions and service instructions. Um, if indeed your unit did need um, any kind of uh, service. And I don't know if this unit came with this originally but this appears to be a spare belt for the cassette player mechanism. More than likely that did not come with the unit. And here we also have a cassette tapes and troubleshooting manual for the JVC boombox. There's the Notorious. This is where we all got this from in the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Let me uh, give you a close up of that. The old pencil and the cassette tape winding routine to tighten up your cassette tape before you put it in there. So it doesn't come unspooled. You have a troubleshooting section. And it looks like it's in uh, multiple languages. This is German. And yeah, it comes in a couple of different languages. So this is basically your cassette tape care manual. This uh, basically outlines how to care for your cassette tapes. We also have an instruction booklet that came with the unit. So 
assistant manual. Also comes in multiple languages, outlining your main features, precautions, an outline of all of the functions of the unit with a detailed description of what all the buttons and features do. Power supply can be ran on um, 120 or 220 volts, selectable, are also ran on eight D-cell batteries, or you can have uh, purchased a, a, um, a car adapter so that you can plug it into the cigarette lighter of your automobile and run it that way. And other facilities such as radio reception, how to tune in your shortwave stations, and all of that's contained within this manual. How to record from the radio, tape playback, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual radio itself and get this thing unpacked. And actually, let me, uh, before we do that, I'll take out these demo cassettes and show you what all else this came with. It came with uh, three of these cassette tapes. They are a uh, 30 minute cassette tapes made by Royal Cassette. And I'm assuming that these are original cassette tapes that came with the unit. I'm not 100% sure. Um, somebody may be able to drop something down in the comments here, but I've got three of these that came with the unit I'm Not sure if they came with originally. I'm, I'm sure they probably did because they're not even out of the package They've never been unwrapped. There's three of them in here and they've never been taken out of the package I don't think that this bubble wrap is original to the radio. I'm sure this was wrapped in some sort of plastic and it probably had some protective film over the uh, shiny areas of the radio when new. Well, let me get this guy out of here. Up at the top of the package, you'll notice there's uh, you'll notice there's little holes here. These holes have basically contained. 8D batteries that you can use to power the radio with, which is really cool because nowadays you buy anything electronic that comes with batteries or removable batteries, they typically don't come with the battery. So when you purchase this brand new, it's ready to go. You can take, out, take it out of the box, pop your batteries in it and get going and get on the road and enjoy your tunes. So this is the original cord that came with it. Go ahead and get that unwrapped there. And uh, let's get this box out of the way so that we don't have uh, an unhappy accident happen here with this. So as you can see, this guy is in fantastic condition. Trim, everything. I mean, this is just, like I said, it's a museum quality piece. So I'm um, going to pause for a second to go ahead and get it plugged in. And we're going to run through some of the features of this radio and uh, kind of just do a run through and demonstration for you so uh stand by all right so here it is in all of its glory just wanted to give you a nice close-up view of this and uh let you take a look at the condition of this thing just in really mint condition so the um, speaker system consists of a 10 inch woofer I believe this is a four and a half inch mid-range and a two inch tweeter. Um, we also have available to us FM, AM radio and three shortwave bands. And you'll notice that on the right hand side here, we have a dual function meter. Basically this meter can measure your battery life and also allow you to fine-tune the stations that you're listening to and uh, also along with that there's a fine-tuning adjustment here so basically the fine-tuning adjustment was used when um, tuning in shortwave band um, you would 
literally start with this in the zero position and then as you retune the radio with the tuning knob on the side you would watch your level tuning meter and basically um, tune it until the level meter would go to the far right area and then you would follow up by using the fine tuning button either in the positive position or negative position to get to get this thing tuned in as well as possible. So once you've started hearing some broadcasts come in, you just watch this, this meter and adjust it until it got as far right as possible and then follow up by using your fine tuning. So the fine tuning was only uh, for use with the shortwave channels. You have three shortwave channels um, to choose from that are selectable up at the top. You've also got a peak level control. Um, this basically allows you to monitor your um, audio input level when you are recording from the boombox. You also have a press touch dial light feature where you can press this button to illuminate the dial if you were in a dark circumstance. And uh, also have a cassette tape player and recorder. You have a memory feature on off switch. You have a tape counter that you can reset to zero when you first start your cassette tape. You got these really fantastic um, grab handles on the sides here. Makes it really easy to grab a hold of this thing from the sides if you needed to. And then up at the top, we have our cassette transport features. We have play, we have pause, we have eject and stop. Uh, cue and rewind, which are better known as fast forward and rewind and your record button. And up at the top behind that, we have the peak on and off, which would allow you to um, turn the peak indicators on or off, and also um, allow you to switch the radio from manual to automatic level control. So this particular dial here with the min and max would allow you to manually adjust your record input level and then off to the right of that, you had a mic mixing feature that you can turn on or off. And you, uh, this dial here that would allow you to adjust the balance between your microphone and the source that's actually playing, whether it be your FM radio or your auxiliary input or your um, any kind of external source that you had hooked up to it. To the right of that, you've got your, um, your on and off switch, basically turning it on would be radio on or auxiliary input. And in the off position would basically be your tape player position. And in that position, if you were to hit play on your cassette tape, that would power the radio up and start playing. To the right of that, you, we got your bass and treble adjustments for tone adjustment, big volume control slider. And you have a band selector up at the top here too, which you can select from FM, shortwave two, or three, two, one, and then MW, which is your AM band radio. And I'm not sure why they refer to it as MW. I forgot what that stands for, but anyhow, um, here we have an interesting feature as well that you don't find on many boom boxes. It's a built-in swivel mic. And basically, I guess if you were to use this for interview purposes, you can have the microphone aimed towards you and then when the person you were interviewing was talking, you can kind of swivel the mic around so it's positioned towards the person that is, uh, is speaking. So it has multiple positions that you can kind of spin depending on what direction you want the microphone to face, which is a pretty neat feature. It's not something you see on every boom box. And off to the right and left hand side of the boom box, you have this little area here which is kind of recessed, as you may notice. You can have an optional carry strap with this radio, which would connect on either side to these posts. So there's one on that side, and there's one on this side, which would allow you to um, attach that optional strap. Back here, we have our antenna. It's a telescoping style antenna. It is a single antenna setup. Um, you basically raise this and aim it and also that would help you to achieve the um, the strongest broadcast you, pro you probably could get out of this radio on any one of its built-in um, bands. Back at the, back at the uh, top of the unit here we have a nice 
large carry handle that spans from one side of the radio to the other. Um, on the side here, we have a receptacle for a power cord. And we also have a DC 12 volt input, which would allow you to power this from your car's 12 volt power source uh, with an, adoption, an, uh, an optional adapter that would allow you to do that. And then down at the bottom here, we have a voltage selector, which is set to 120 volts. Um, it could also be ran off of 220 volts. Right around back here, we have uh, the badging for the model and serial number of this unit, which also matches the warranty card and the box. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the serial number there. And to the right or left of the battery box, it shows you how to install your batteries, indicating the springs and which direction the batteries should be facing. And as you can see here, a nice clean battery compartment. Also some engraving on the inside or some raised areas that show you your positive side of the battery and your negative side of the battery. Your 1.5 volt batteries times four, both on top and on bottom. On the top, your positive ends face left. On the bottom, your positive ends face right. So you get some venting it back here. I'm assuming for heat dispersion. And that is about it. Let's take a look at the other side. We have various inputs and outputs here. We have a microphone input and remote input. You have your auxiliary input and you have your ear, which means your earphone. This would, uh, you could plug in a single earpiece to this unit if you wanted to listen to it. Um, and not disturb anybody else. The beat cut would be used um, AM band radio if you were listening to something and your, your broadcast was uh, suddenly playing music or anything like that, you can use the beat cut feature to lower the bass of that particular broadcast. And I just wanted to show you how nice and shiny all the plastic bits and pieces are on this thing. I mean, the condition of this unit is amazing. More often than not, this top panel on these radios are just dinged and beat up and scratched. Um, it, this one's just incredibly clean. Anyhow, that's an overview of its functions and features. I'll go ahead and plug it in and uh, try not to get a copyright strike. I've got some material on this cassette tape. I probably will not play because it's not copyright free material. Um, but we can plug it in and get it turned on. So uh, give me a second and I'll get it plugged back in and we'll run through some of the features. All right, so we're back with uh, features and functions. So right now I got the radio plugged in. I uh, just wanted to show you real quick if you can see, I'm gonna press this dial light. Actually, I have to have it turned on in order to use the dial light feature. Um, in order to do so, I have to press play on the cassette mechanism or tune it turn it into the tuner feature. So I'll turn the tuner on and just kind of keep the volume at a minimum at a minimum right now so we don't get a copyright strike. I'm gonna press the dial light and show you how nicely that lights up the dial. The bulbs are located at the far right so or far left so it's brightest in this location. It kind of just spans the whole radio dial so that in a darkly lit situation you can see um, how that lights up. And as you see here, we've got it tuned into a station. And uh, you'll notice when I tune it away from the station, that needle drops. And if I go ahead and further tune it or raise the antenna, you'll notice that that should go a little bit higher. Now that I've got the antenna fully extended, you'll notice that the, uh, the signal has increased quite dramatically. So, um, FloridaCentralCU.com The Depot Park by and manage 10 to 15 miles per hour with our temperature change, which still includes I mean, for our clock. 
tonight, head in the freezer fail party. Yeah, not much to be had on a short wave. Or AM for that matter, it seems. It's best to use short wave or AM late at night when there are less um, less radio frequency disturbances going on in the air. Um, but yeah, that's the FM section of this unit. We also have a cassette tape player. If I put this in the off position and press play, we have the cassette tape rolling at this point. You have your fast forward. Stop. Rewind features. And we have our eject feature, which is not quite as nice as some of the models later to come. There was no dampening on these. They just kind of popped open. And you'll notice that these cassette tapes actually insert upside down on this radio. So the tape head mechanism is at the top versus the bottom, which is uh, where they typ typically are located on most cassette tape players. So anyhow, this is my JVC RC550. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, stay tuned. I will be going over some of my other models that I have. Uh, as you might notice, I have some more in my collection that I will be sharing with you in future videos. Uh, take a look and see what's to come. Just a quick teaser here of what we might be going over in the future. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video today and I hope it wasn't too long winded for you. I just wanted to share with you my JVC RC 550. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, post them down bottom and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. If you like the video, remember to click the like button and subscribe if you aren't already for future video notifications. Have a great day and have a blessed one. Take care guys, till the next time.